Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today it looks like Christmas came early because we're doing another unboxing from Steve's Leaves. If you're unfamiliar with Steve's Leaves, they're one of my favorite online purveyors of houseplants. They carry such a wide variety of plants from begonias, aroids, peperomias. Even more recently, I've been noticing that they've had some nice Hoyas in stock, which is very exciting. But not only that, the price that you pay and the size of the plant you receive is just so much better at Steve's Leaves compared to some of the other places that I've gotten plants from in the past online so I just really enjoy that about them you're not just gonna get one little tiny little piece of plant for an outrageous price you're going to get a nice full pot of whatever plant you're purchasing so always really excited about that and this box is looking rather large today so I think we're gonna have a decent sized unboxing here so let's go ahead and get inside this box and see what they sent us I do have to mention as always that these plants were sent to me for free but I am not getting paid to make this video Alrighty, so we have this box right here with some paper on top, just keeping our plants safe. I'm going to remove it. I was smart today, and I have a little bucket here next to me to put all my garbage in, because I never think that far ahead in advance. And we definitely have a nice little box full of plants here. You can see there's a little bit of bubble wrap on top. Hopefully you can see, I can't see the monitor. But all the plants are nicely laid in there, so let's go ahead and start getting in there. Just pulling out the invoice to see that we have 12 plants in this unboxing today. So we have a very nice unboxing. This is definitely the largest Steve Lee's unboxing we've ever done here on YouTube. And there is a very nice selection of plants. I think you guys are gonna really like what you see. Um, and I should mention that um, Steve's Leaves, they offer winter shipping assurance. I've always done my unboxing videos from Steve's Leaves in the summertime, so this is never something we had to worry about. But now that the temperature is dipping lower, you do want to make sure that you're getting that winter shipping assurance. So um, I have 12 plants in here, so they sent me two uh, winter shipping assurances because they recommend one winter shipping assurance for every six plants that you purchase. Pull this first plant off the top here. And I always really appreciate the care that Steve's Leaves puts into not only growing their house plants, but packaging them up and sending them to you. So they always come in prime condition, looking fantastic. Barely ever any shipping damage, as you can see from this first plant, the way it just popped out, ready to greet you guys. Oh my goodness. So this one is a Syngonium auritum. So this is a much more like thicker, leathery leaf Syngonium. Uh, you can see that these leaves have this kind of trilobed leaf, which I am obsessed with. You guys know if you watch me that I just love these uh, leaves that are just in kind of different pieces here and there, a little bit segmented. I absolutely love it. But this is such a nice chonky piece. And it looks like there's not only one, but two plants inside this pot. So that's what I was saying. Normally, if you're probably going to purchase this on like Etsy or eBay, I would say it's like you, likely you're probably just going to get one cutting inside the pot since this is a more out there Syngonium that you're probably not going to walk into any of your local houseplant stores and find in stock as far as I'm aware. So it's really exciting that they send not just one plant, but two really well-established plants. And you'll see that they wrap the plants here in plastic and they also put a little bit of packing paper on top to keep the soil in place. So we can just go ahead and remove that. And I know we got plenty more plants to go through today, but I do wanna say that whenever I receive plants in the mail, I always make sure that I let them get to know my home. I let them acclimate to my home for at least a week or two, preferably two weeks, specifically now that we're in the winter season. I really wanna let my plants acclimate to my home since they just came from a greenhouse where they've been receiving prime conditions. So after two weeks or so, I'll go ahead and repot my house plant. And also I just like to repot my plants usually when the soil is more on the drier side. It's it can be bad news if you repot your plants and the soil is very wet. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna grab this one here. Ooh, this is an exciting one. Give you guys the reveal. Oh, beautiful, oh my goodness. So this is a Pilea cateri variegata. So I'm sure you're much more used to seeing the plain Pilea cateri, or more common, I notice, is the smaller leaf version, the Pilea cateri minima. Uh, which is something you'll often see in the terrarium selection at your local houseplant stores, but you're not often going to see the variegated version of this houseplant. This is really, really gorgeous, a really different type of variegation, kind of similar to like the uh, Syngonium albo variegatum or perhaps the Monstera albo, uh, that more kind of like splotchy white variegation. It's really, really nice. I really love this. Oh my gosh, this is so gorgeous. I love plain Pilea cateri. In fact, I love a lot of Pileas, I'm sure 
I talk about some of my pileas to no end here on my YouTube channel, but it's not only the variegation for me, but it's also just how beautiful these large leaves are. As I was saying, I'm so much more used to seeing the smaller leaf version of this plant, but I really just think that this larger leaf version just really hits differently. It's really quite beautiful. And pileas are very easy plants to grow. I feel like they don't get enough attention compared to some of the other plants that we are used to seeing on Instagram. They do require a little bit more moisture and they will tell you if you're not giving it enough moisture by wilting slightly, but fortunately they are very uh, nice in the fact that they're just going to perk back up once you water them and they'll look good as new. As long as you're not leaving them wilted for a week at a time, then they're gonna start to lose some leaves. But very, very easy house plants that definitely don't receive enough attention, but this Pilea cateri variegata is just so gorgeous. I'm very much not used to seeing this Pilea on the market. On to our third plant. Ooh. I can't believe how full this is. So this is a Hoya breviolata. It's got this really interesting, almost like very similar to like a Dishidia uh, imbricata or a Dishidia jerry, much more of a Dishidia look than our Dishidia uh, look compared to many Hoyas that we see, but this is just, it's in such abundance. I'm not used to seeing Hoyas like this. I've seen this Hoya sold at one plant store before and they just sold one tiny little cutting for, I'm sure, probably pretty much the price that this plant costs right here. So uh, I'm pretty blown away with this full pot right here. Let's go ahead and get this uh, plastic off so that we can get more of the full effect. I've definitely been noticing that Steve's Leaves has been carrying some more Hoyas lately than I noticed in the past. So that's very exciting. Uh, I'm sure they're gonna be adding a lot more than that to their website, but this is just such a full plant. I can't even count how many cuttings that they have in here. It's so full. It's covered in new growth. All of the leaves look super healthy. Not a single yellow leaf on here, even though it's just been in the mail. I think I'm gonna put this one underneath the grow light shelf that I have in my bedroom just to get it started because I really wanna make sure that it holds on to these new leaves since it is coming from the green ass, how I said. And Hoyas are rather slow growing. I often bring Hoyas in my home and they don't do much, but since this has some, some things going on and I wanna keep that going as, as best as I can. So, wow, such a, a gorgeous Hoya, much more of like an alien-esque appearance with the way these leaves are kind of curled over. We're so much more used to those very thick, succulent, waxy, shiny Hoyas. So this is definitely a little bit of an outlier for you. So I'm really excited to watch this one grow. I'm already loving this little collection that's accumulating over here. I'm excited to see what else is in here. So I see right off the bat that this one is a begonia before we even get in here, which I know that Steve's Leaves uh, is known for their begonias. They have, out of all of the plants that they grow, the largest selection of begonias. And I am getting much more into begonias lately. I um, struggled with them at first because I think I was growing the wrong begonias, but I think Steve's Leaves has been steering me in the direction as the right begonias to grow because now I'm starting to get a lot more success with them. Wow, oh my gosh. So this doesn't even look like a begonia to me, but it, it, it is. It's a begonia imperialis, and this one is the cultivar silver band. That backside has that lovely purple shade, which if you follow me here on YouTube, you know that I am a huge fan of plants that have different shades on the backs of the leaves as they do on the top. I think this is totally registering as like a cissus discolor to me, especially with the way that the backsides are purple. I think that's totally the vibe I'm getting from this plant. So I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with it. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that this is one of the more inexpensive begonias that they have on their website. So I'd say the majority of the begonias that are available on Steve's leaves are probably in the ballpark range of like 10 to $20. They are most mostly inexpensive for what I've seen, uh, which is wonderful because not only are they beautiful, but you get offered them in such abundance. And there are some begonias on their website that are in the you know more uh, collector price range of like 40, 50, 60 dollars. So perhaps if you're just starting out with begonias, I would re recommend trying out one that's more on the lower end just to get your foot in. But then once you get a little bit more comfortable, it is kind of exciting to try out some of those more collector begonias because they really have some killer foliage. Maybe we'll see one of them in this box here. But this is just so gorgeous. I am shocked with how beautiful of a plant this is for such a decent price, especially in the climate of uh, today's market, which some of those plants that are getting really popular on Instagram, we see on eBay for like thousands of dollars. But this is definitely not one of those, but quite frankly, I think it kind of rivals those plants in beauty because this is stunning. I'm loving this begonia. It looks gorgeous. These asymmetrical leaves are stunning and it looks entirely different than any of the begonias that I already have in my home. So I'm excited to watch this one acclimate to my space and welcome it in. I'm actually keeping the mess to a minimum today. Of course, there's always gonna be a little bit of dirt when we're doing an unboxing, but I'm doing, I'm doing a pretty good job. But honestly, I think that it's 
partly in place of the fact that Steve's Leaves does such an incredible job at shipping their houseplants that all the soil is pretty much staying in place. We have another begonia here. Wow, this, this is a vibe. Okay, so this is begonia polygonoides. And this looks so much more like a Hoya or a lipstick plant or a peperomia to me than it does a begonia. You know, of course, the more I look at it, the more I see that it has those asymmetrical leaves. You can kind of see, but wow. Especially these red stems are totally giving me like peperomia pereschii folia or peperomia tetragona vibes. So this is really a vibe. This is, I know I just said this last begonia was unlike anything I, any begonia I grow in my home, but this begonia doesn't even look like a begonia. This is so much more like a Hoya to me. This looks like a plant that would have such a presence just like trailing down a bookcase or just trailing in general. I am not used to seeing trailing begonias. This is really giving me a vibe right here. I'm really excited to grow this one in my home. I feel like I'm really excited about all these plants, but this one is just really blowing my mind today in the sense that I didn't know begonias could look like this. I feel like the more begonias we're going through, I'm worried that my mind's gonna get blown even more. So let's be careful and hang on tight. But wow, you can see just sitting next to this Hoya right here, or hopefully you can see, I don't know if it's on camera or not, but they really do have such a similar appearance in comparison to it sitting next to this begonia, this other begonia right behind it. So I don't know. Hoya lovers out there, I might have found a begonia for you. I don't think I'm familiar with this one, so let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Familiar with the genus, but the species I am very interested to see. This is pretty funky. This is pretty cool. I have never seen a Hoya like this. This is called Hoya globulosa. First of all, these leaves are just like everything for me right now. They are very large, but they're very long. Like they're very long for a Hoya. It has just this really interesting, like enigmatic veination to it. It also really shows through on the back sides of the leaves. With a lot of these more out there Hoyas, oh my gosh, wait, these leaves, these leaves are like super fuzzy. Okay, life changed right now. Anyway, what I was trying to say before I just got enamored by this plant even more um, is that when you buy a more out there Hoya, it's so often that you're just going to receive one little cutting. So the fact that there's two established plants in here, just like the Syngonium aretum, I'm just like absolutely thrilled about. Normally you would probably get like two leaves just sitting inside a little pot and that's all you would get. But this is two healthy plants, both with a couple nodes on them and new growth. This is so cool. I wish you guys could feel this plant because I wasn't expecting this. If I didn't, I'm like, did I touch all my other plants? Am I missing out on anything? Okay. Wow. This is really something. I wish that I, I could have you guys feel this. It feels just like a Calathea rufabarba if you're familiar with that plant. Very, very fuzzy. Oh my goodness. Okay, I could be touching this all day. Also, it's just like my Sideraceus fascata that I got in my last unboxing from Steve's Leaves. I literally had to put that plant right at my desk because I just like to touch it all the time when I'm sitting and doing my work because it just, it's so therapeutic touching these fuzzy plants. It's like a fuzzy blanket, but a little bit more magical per se. But wow, all of these plants are blowing me away, but oh my gosh. This is such an interesting Hoya. I am going to baby the hell out of this Hoya because this is really something right here and I feel like I'm taking a, a lot of responsibility caring for this Hoya. So how many have we done? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're halfway through this unboxing. Whew. Okay, so let's go ahead and get another one out. I'm looking forward to this one. I grew this one a couple years ago. I bought it from Steve's Leaves and I potted it in too large of a pot, which if you are familiar with Peperomia, is a bit of a death sentence, so I have learned my lesson with the last one. So this is, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. This is a Peperomia Fuzzy Mystery. And this is just a Peperomia, you are not going to walk into your local houseplant stores and find this. I've never seen this in the little terrarium selections. Sometimes you find those little weird Peperomias here and there. I've never seen this one. This is something that I've only ever seen on Steve's leaves. It's really just something else. It looks. Unlike any other peperomia that I'm familiar with, I feel like if I had to compare it to any peperomia, it would perhaps give me vibes of like the Versha feltii mixed with like, like rugosa or something. I don't know, but this is, this is something else. This is, 
I'm a big Peperomia fan and I was a bit devastated when I killed my last one because it was so gorgeous, but now it's as if we've been reunited, we're meeting again, and I'm going to probably leave this plant in its uh, nursery planter for probably the next year or so. I feel like that's something I like to do with my Peperomias, especially ones that have a little bit more succulent stems, this one included. Um, so I am going to uh, leave this in its plastic nursery planter uh, for honestly, probably a couple years. I'll be real with you. Uh, maybe if I find the perfect planter, I'll have to do it. But um, I think for the sake of growing this plant, just like my watermelon Peperomia, my Peperomia argyria, I've had that thing for like three, I think three years now, and it is still in the same nursery planter that I received it in, and I've had some really good luck with that. And some of my other Peperomias that I've done that same treatment to, I've found some really good luck. So I think I'm going to take heed from that and do the same thing, find a nice cash po for it. Two Peperomias in a row. Wow, oh my goodness. Look at this inflorescence right here. I wonder if it has a smell. No, nope, doesn't really smell like anything, which is good because most Peperomia flowers don't smell very good. I've had my Peperomia polybotria flower fall on my face one time and that smells like dirty laundry, so that was amazing. Anyway, this is a Peperomia elongata. These have such large and long leaves in comparison to many of the other Peperomias. You can see how large this new leaf is right here. Wow, this is a really beautiful specimen of Peperomia elongata right here. Let's go ahead and get it outside of the plastic. And I've grown this one in the past. Actually, I think I still grow it right now. But this is a plant that I love, not only for the leaves, but I really love the petioles. I'll have to give you guys a close up on this, but the petioles just have this like splotchy red all over them. It just really stands out to me. And it's just such a small characteristic about this house, but I'm sure most people are oogling over these leaves, which are beautiful and they're, I'm not dumbing them down whatsoever for these petioles, but the petioles are just very enigmatic to me and I really appreciate it, but also just tied with these thick waxy leaves. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I read on their website before that this plant has medicinal properties, which I'm not aware of many uh, peperomias that have medicinal properties. So I just think that's very interesting. This is another peperomia that I'm probably going to go ahead and leave inside this plastic planter uh, for a good amount of time, just because it's very thick and succulent and I want it to grow to its fullest potential. I have repotted this one in the past and it's been fine, but just like I said, learning from things that I've done before, I think I'm going to go ahead and just take a note from some of the other peperomias I have that are just completely thriving. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it inside this plastic planter. Plus I trust that the soil that's in here that Steve Leaves is using is perfect for this peperomia. So I'm not going to question it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it as they always say. So I'm going to stick with that. But as you can see that this is a much more uh, succulent leaf peperomia, this is one I'm not gonna be watering very often. I'm going to let this dry out nearly completely. And I can definitely use my taco test on it where I go ahead and squeeze the leaves very lightly as if I'm squeezing them up like a taco shell. And I can tell if the plant is well watered as it is right now. These leaves are very succulent and they're not budging whatsoever. And if I was to squeeze it up like a taco shell, this leaf would snap in half. So I'm not going to do that. But if uh, this plant was in need of water, it will have lost that succulence in that water. And I would be able to basically bend these leaves any which way without them breaking whatsoever. So uh, that is a good telltale sign as to when to water your peperomias. Do use it with caution. I don't want you breaking your leaves, but you can just do a light little push on the leaves to see when it's time to water them. Uh, but it's just a thing that I swear by, especially since peperomias are known for plants that can rot easily if you overwater them. So just a surefire way to not overwater your peperomias is to perhaps use the taco test. And I'm really just digging this inflorescence right here. Not that peperomias have the most interesting flowers or inflorescences, as it literally just looks like this kind of like stick, like mouse tail kind of deal, but you don't normally see them this big. And like I said, sometimes they smell pretty bad. So I think that this is a wonderful one to have in my home. Oh my goodness, this is so cute. Oh my gosh, okay, so this is a Euphorbia leuconera. I think they call that the Madagascar Jewel. And this is a more of a succulent, like cactus-y houseplant. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but this is definitely one that has little spines. So I'm gonna be very careful when I'm handling this houseplant. Uh, but these leaves, look at those leaves. They're stunning. They kind of remind me of some other plants that I grow in my home, like my Drymonia or kind of like an aphalandra kind of deal. It looks very, very cool, but this is a euphorbia, which euphorbias are very hardy houseplants. 
As far as I'm aware, Euphorbia are very drought-tolerant houseplants. Think also like Euphorbia milii or a crown of thorns. Uh, it's a very closely related plant to this one. Uh, however, I know that if you do not water them enough, if you really subject them to that drought while they will survive completely, that's when they're going to lose their foliage. So I think this is one that I'm going to be watering kind of on a medium level. I'm going to let it dry out, but once it dries out, I'm going to go ahead and water it again instead of leaving it dried out the same way I would like my aloe vera or the same way I kind of do with my euphorbia trigona. So I'll definitely be a little bit more mindful to keep this plant a little bit more well watered, not like moist or anything, but you guys know what I'm saying. Uh, just because these leaves are so gorgeous. They're really giving me like Sanchezia, Croton, Drymonia vibes. They're really, really gorgeous. So, wow. I didn't know I needed a euphorbia, but apparently I do because this thing is just really, really stunning. And the little bits of red petiole that are coming up and kind of just like turning into the green leaf, I think is really stunning. Just some little things about this plant that I don't think I really ever noticed before. All right, we got three left in here. Oh, this is so cute. It's a Hoya Lacunosa. That's such a fun little Hoya, and they really do have it in such abundance. I used to get this in stock in the plant store where I used to work, and they were the wimpiest little plants ever. They were not well taken care of. The grower did not do a very good job with them. So I am under the impression that Steve's Leaves is probably doing a much better job than that grower was because this plant is already looking 10 times better uh, than any of the ones I've seen before. Once again, I can't even count how many cuttings are in this pot here. I can see how well rooted they are though. They're well, very well rooted, which is something you don't normally see with Hoyas. Often people uh, will not root their Hoyas long enough, but this guy is very well rooted here. It looks like there's at least like eight to 10 cuttings in here, if not more. And most of them have new growth, which is very exciting. As I said, often I would bring home a Hoya. It wouldn't have any new growth on it and it wouldn't give me any new growth for a pretty long time. But these Hoyas are all giving me something to look forward to. There's even a little bit of sun stressing on the leaves. You can see it's got like a little bit of like a rusty red appearance on some of the leaves. So I can go ahead and probably put it in one of my east facing windows here in my apartment so I can kind of keep up with that similar light intensity since this plant seems to be very happy. And Hoya lacunosa is one of the more easier Hoyas to bloom, at least in my own experience. And the blooms smell wonderful. They smell kind of like floral cinnamon. It's very nice. If you have a Hoya blooming in one of your rooms, as soon as you walk walk into the room, you're going to smell the Hoya Lacunosa flowers. And it just smells nice. It smells like you have a flower bouquet in your in your room. It's, it's very nice. But this is such a gorgeous Hoya Lacunosa. Looks so much better already than the other Lacunosa that I've had in my home for like a year or two now. So I am really thrilled with this. The leaves on this alone are just so gorgeous. I'm not used to seeing Lacunosas this beautiful. <laughs> This is a fun one. I've never grown this one in my home before, but I've very much been interested to try it out. That's stunning. Okay, so this is a Ludicia discolor. I believe I'm maybe pronouncing that close to correct. Uh, this is a jewel orchid. I have been getting a little bit more into orchids lately. I brought a couple home with me last year and I feel like I haven't killed them yet. So that's just my segue to trying out a couple more orchids. But this a jewel orchid is more of a terrestrial orchid. Typically we're used to growing our orchids in like bark mixture or sphagnum moss, but this is a type of orchid that's growing to act, going to actually grow perfectly fine in the soil, which I think is fantastic. And not only that, the leaves are gorgeous. Do you see this? The dark blackish leaves with these pink venation to them. It kind of reminds me similar of like my Piper Ornatum, which is a houseplant that I absolutely adore. Really, really gorgeous, really gothic. I'm excited to watch this one grow. Like I said, I've never tried growing these before. I've cared for them before back at the houseplant store, but I've never had one in my own care. So really a full abundant houseplant. Every time I've ever seen these before, they've always just been one piece in the pot and that's it. Same pot around this size, but just one little piece, but this same size pot right here has like one, two, three, four, five, six grow tips right here, probably even more that I'm missing. So this is a very, very nice specimen of Ludicia discolor right here. These do flower like regular orchids, but they their flower is a little bit more less showy. They're just like these little spikes of flowers that come up, which is exciting by all means but I have a hunch that jewel orchids are grown mainly for their foliage because it, it really is some killer foliage, especially with just this color alone. You can see how it really just stands out amongst all these different houseplants with all their green foliage versus this nice dark purple, pinkish, brownish, blackish color. It really is just so absolutely gorgeous. I will have to get a little bit more familiar with how I water these. I would imagine that since they're 
orchids, they prefer to be on the drier side and they probably still prefer a more well-draining mixture. We'll have to do some research, but I think having this in my possession is a good start. And also, as I've said many times, knowing that it's coming from a responsible greenhouse where things are grown very, very well, very responsibly, I feel very confident that this is going to do very well for me. In fact, it's so gorgeous. I'm probably going to make sure that I find this a perfectly fitting planter for it because I can't just go ahead and plant this up in anything. This is too gorgeous of a house plant. So we'll have to think about that a little bit later on. And we have made it to our final house plant in this box here. Oh, all right, this is gonna be a cool one. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. I believe that this is one of those more collector begonias that I was referring to earlier in this video. Oh my goodness. It already looks like something I don't even, oh my goodness. They ship it in this plastic bag here. I'm wondering if it's to keep the humidity up because this is probably a begonia that prefers higher humidity. I'm not sure if it's just to protect it, but I might be using this plastic bag to keep the humidity up to get it started. If I don't, I don't know if I have a glass enclosure big enough for this. I may have to hit the thrift stores and see what I can find. And this little contraption that they made here really did such an excellent job at keeping this plant safe during its journey in the mail. Do you guys see this? Do you see this? I feel like I've just been bestowed a responsibility by receiving this plant. It is so gorgeous. The front sides of the leaves, the back sides of the leaves, I guess they do look very similar, but they just, the way the light shows through is just really hitting me. It's, do you see this? I don't even think I've even said yet. I think I've just, I'm very enthralled by this house plant, but this is called Begonia Chloronera. And as I mentioned, I am, I'm pretty sure that this is a more collective begonia. I'm pretty sure this is something that does require higher humidity. So we'll make sure that we are going to give this higher humidity. Like I said, I'm going to have to go glass cloche hunting or terrarium hunting because I don't think I'm prepared. <laughs> this is just so amazing though, wow. Um, as it acclimates to my home, since it was up in that contraption, I'm sure it's going to let loose a little bit. You can see it's already starting to kind of just like flop down a little bit more to its just natural state. Um, we will encourage it to do that over the next 24 hours or so, but <laughs> need I have any words for this? I just had no idea that the begonias came this big in this little two and a half inch pot right here. This is really, really something. And like I was saying, uh, the collector begonias on the website, I think for what I mostly see run from like 35 to maybe 50, $60. But I think you're getting what you pay for. Actually, I know you're getting what you pay for because the proof is in the pudding, baby. Look at this. Anyway, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to put this one down. So it's a good thing I opened this one last, so. Oh, wow. So that is it for today's video. This is where we're gonna start to wrap up because I am going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with all these plants. I'm going to have to figure some things out. Let me just go ahead and wrap up and show you guys every single plant one more time. Figuring out what I'm going to do with this one in the meantime. So we have this ever so lovely and just completely breathtaking Begonia Chloronera. Okay, we're good. Uh, I have this Ludicia Discolor. I have a Hoya Lacunosa. We have this Euphorbia Leuconura. A Peperomia Elongata. Begonia Polygonoides. Hoya Breviolata. Oh my goodness, this is testing me. Uh, Begonia Imperialis Silver Band. Okay. <laughs> Hoya Globulosa. Peperomia Fuzzy Mystery, Pilea Cateri Variegata, 
And last, but most certainly not least, probably the largest plant in this selection, I guess tied for that begonia, I think they're kind of fighting here for that, uh, is the Syngonium auritum. So we have such an incredible selection of houseplants today. I think this is a really great variety to kind of showcase what Steve's Leaves offers because they have such an incredible aeroid selection. They clearly have such an incredible begonia selection. Their peperomia selection is pretty much second to none. And they just have so many other hidden gems out there like their pileas and now they're getting a bunch of different hoyas available so there's just a lot to love there's something new every week so it's always exciting to check out their website I absolutely love perusing it but yeah like I said got some work to do so thank you guys so much for joining me in today's video Steve's Lee's unboxing 2021 winter if you don't already follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage follow Steve's Leaves at Steve's Leaves Inc and I will see you guys in my next video have a great day